Welcome back to Vic Acres Wonderland. My name is Matt Roberts. I will be your host today. We are back with the fallout, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between. Um, unfortunately, things have come out over this weekend, especially over the past couple of days. So this is one of the reasons why we are back with the fallout. To let people know, these are all about controversies that have happened either during the World Cup or just after the World Cup and everything in between. Uh, we may This series may carry on. We don't know. We'll wait and see, see if there is any controversial decisions throughout the season. But at the current moment, I am joined by Adam and Lottie. Adam, how are you? Um, I'm doing OK. Um, back for another pod. Um, so, yeah, it's me. Or if you're watching on YouTube, it's the disembodied voice of Adam. Uh, <laughs> um, due to um, internet issues, this is the best way I can actually get a decent connection. But, yeah, looking forward to going over some of the recent stories. and. Um, sadly, since you know, since the World Cup has ended, there's been quite a few. Um, even some more breaking today, as we uh, as we will soon discuss. And as always, joined by the wonderful and as always right, <laughs> Lutty. Always right. I don't. I don't think so. Um, someone else on this screen enjoys correcting me a bit too much. Um, but um, I don't mean that in a bad way. But. No, I'm all right. I'm still kind of a bit flat after uh, the World Cup the other day. Um, probably noticed in my my wonderful hosting skills, I wasn't even thinking straight. Um, so I do apologise to everyone who wasn't impressed with me in that episode because even I wasn't impressed. Um, but yeah, I just managed to go out and watch Arsenal. I was like, yeah, this is not doing it for me anymore. I want the women's football back. Can't just yeah. As much as I enjoyed watching and getting stressed out of watching a 10-man Arsenal defend one a 1-0 one against Palace, it's just like, where's the women's football club? Well, the good news is the season is coming up fast. Essentially, there is less than four, two weeks to go until the Arsenal do play Linko Pings in the Champions League qualifier. So... You don't have to wait around soon. However, we do not know where the Champions League is going to be broadcasted at the, this current moment because in the past we've had to go through random channels and things like that. Um, the joys of women's football, ladies and we gentlemen. Should, well, I should, we should just make it clear. I think last time when we had it in the um, earlier rounds, Arsenal were the ones who broadcast it in-house. They did their own coverage of the game. And I believe, I mean, even the playoff against Ajax, I think Arsenal did cover both. Um, games. I mean, it didn't really matter for me. I was lucky enough to attend both. But I'm pretty sure when we had two years ago when I think we was in Russia, I think it was, there was some with that little playoff tournament um, in the third round. I'm pretty sure Arsenal covered it. So hopefully they, they do the same this time around. Adam, just to let you know, even before then, you had to go around to try and find the, the Arsenal game against PSG. Uh, um, you had to try and find it through alternative channels because no one else was showing it. Uh, that was during lockdown um, or just after that, uh, just before the new lockdown season, they were trying to sort out the Champions League, um, which ended up being Chelsea versus Barcelona and Barcelona thrust Chelsea in the final. So anyway, let's get on with it. Um, speaking of uh, Chelsea, big, uh, they do have a majority of the Lioness along with Man City in the squad. However, some Gunas were in that squad, Lotta, Vuben, Moy, as well as Alessia Russo, they headed back to London tonight after their flight. They were met with fans. However, after being told that they were definitely going to be there and they were just going to be going straight through, they weren't going to see any other fans or interact at all, uh, they went through a back gate. This caused a little bit of controversy between a lot of people on Twitter and especially on Facebook in the um Super League groups, uh, just what was your initial thoughts, Adam, when you heard that, about this? I couldn't see what the problem was. Um, we we don't, we're not owed 
anything in terms of that. I don't, there's a real growth with women's football. One of the, one of the big sort of side effects is this insistence on uh, meeting the players and, and getting photos of the players. And we get that in the middle part, but it's sort of exploding outwards until you, almost we have a, we have, we're expected. It's almost an ex- expectation that we must have this interaction. We must see these players and we must get pictures and their boots. And you see the signs hung up in the football stadiums all the time now. Um, I saw one uh, in the thing was uh, Lauren Hemp on the picture she put up talking about the World Cup final. There's a picture there. Someone she just lost the World Cup final, and someone's got a sign asking for her boots, which I feel just means it's slightly wrong. So yeah, fans want to go up and thank the Lionesses. I think that's great, but I could also understand is also yeah, just go home. You not not have to worry about you know not have that interaction. So I couldn't see a problem with it. I can understand you'd be disappointed, but it's not it wasn't an official gathering this was you you made that choice in the hope that you'd meet them it didn't happen you know bad luck um see them when they actually play a game at meadow park next time and you know have a have a photo with them then but i couldn't see an issue with it personally i'm gonna have to agree with adam that um i i've done that flight for sydney back to london via singapore and it is a long bloody flight and the last thing you want to be doing is getting off that plane and having to find that energy to see the fans. Like they've had a tough tournament, they've had a long flight home. There's, you've got to consider the human aspect to it for me. And I completely understand why they went out the back door rather than go and see the fans. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm completely with Adam on this one, Matt. With this as well, just I understand point of view from the players I understand the point of the fans I think a lot of people do have to expect that the flight the flight has an impact on people you're on a flight for almost a day yeah and it's 20 24 24 hours and 30 minutes precisely um via fly emirates as well if they've if they've taken that flight because with the flight routes it's Sydney to Singapore Singapore to Dubai Dubai to London because the planes can't always fly straight through unless you'll take it. I know on the way, when I went down to New Zealand, I went from London to Dubai, Dubai to Sydney, and then I hopped over to New Zealand. Um, so it's it's a really long bloody flight. I mean, a day after the World Cup final, you're up in the air, you've got to sit there, you've got to celebrate. Poor Romilly like, poor Bright, she's celebrating her birthday on the plane. Like, she's time traveling and it's still, it was probably still her birthday in several time zones that she's probably travelled across, which is a bit insane. Um, but yeah, it's a long flight. You've got you've got to cut, cut some people some slack. Because as much as we love them, there are superstars. Um we're super, super proud of them and we can't wait to see them back um on the turf all together again. You've got to cut, cut them a break. I mean there was an interview with Amanda Illestead and I'm going off a tangent from England. She was saying, "Yeah, I fly. We fly home, but I'm back. I'm at London Coley on Sunday, and that's how insane their schedules are. Like she's probably been back a day earlier than um, than the lionesses, but they've still got to go back to work. There's no break in between." I always found it mad with some of the presenters as well. The idea they like think of. We saw players like um, Alex Scott or, or commentators, or like Seth Hutchinson, who are out in Australia in the commentary or the punter, and then like the next day, suddenly they're on the BBC or they're on the Sky doing the Premier League, and then a few days later, suddenly they're back over in Australia doing more punditry and more commentary. I'm thinking these they, they must be absolute shattered um, just from doing the touring of throwing on these huge 12-hour flight stopovers, and yeah, God, yeah. So yeah, I, like, yeah. Doing you smiling with you get rested and off tired, <laughs> exhausted, <laughs> wave. <laughs> so no, I, I fully get and um, yeah, it's bad luck for the fans. But if you want to see them, come to the games. Come to the games this season. There'll be plenty of opportunities to give them a wave and a thank you. Then it wasn't just that Alex Scott was also there um, on the on that same plane actually. Um, so I, I imagine she's going to have a nice little break herself now. She's not going to be, but then again, she'll probably be expected to do football focus. 
um she'll probably be leading the women's super league show when it eventually returns and things like that as well um but it's a bit of a shame really that you don't have that break i think everyone was expecting that break but speaking of breaks <laughs> mr fifa um Giov- uh, gianni uh, infantino decided to let people know and Lottie is shaking her head, so I will come to her first. Yeah, for, but, for the audio uh, listeners, I did uh, did do a massive viral there because I absolutely hate this man's guts. So just to play out the the situation, every time there's a World Cup or in the lead up to a World Cup final, Infantino or the FIFA president will sit down, do a press conference, and it'll be basically about how well the World Cup has gone. It might be about, oh, look at the sales figures that we've done up there. It was over 2 million tickets sold. Um, That means that FIFA have broken even. All the boring money stuff that I goes straight over my head and most most fans' heads as well. Um, He then decided to talk. I I don't know who asked the question, but I think it was about something to do with um, women's and the equal pay that they were getting and infantino um this is paraphrasing he said women must pick their battles uh pick sorry pick the right battles in the fight for equal pay and then ada hegerberg um the denmark forwards and also i'm um, some some uh well-renowned champions league winner uh goes and tweets working on a little presentation to convince men who's in on twitter and Infantino also has been said that uh, equal pay uh, would only be in quote marks a symbol and would not again in quotes uh, solve anything. I do apologise to the ordinary listeners because you've missed me using air quotes. <laughs> but Lottie, on this front, when you've got the face of FIFA turning around saying things like this, and then you've got Ada Hegerberg making these sort of sarcastically making these uh, oh let's make a huge presentation i think it added fuel to the fire that you were already having it did but the these players deserve to be uh, are allowed to express their anger um i mean in the words of one of our very own vivian miedemar um we shouldn't have to pick our fights we should absolutely shouldn't have to convince men we deserve to be treated equally and it's the same across the board whether it's in sport everyday working life or even in social settings we shouldn't have to have this constant battle that we've had for over 100 years but it seems that to the fifa they've got this 100 year old attitude um which isn't really acceptable and infantino needs to realize the woso community will not stand for this we are we are we might argue amongst ourselves and domestic but when we come together for our clubs our, well not our clubs our international teams we are a force to be reckoned with and why should we have to prove we are we, we should be on the world's biggest stage? We should have a massive competition. It the way that it's going, the women's football will be a billion pound industry. You keep you, for the progress that is going over the last few years, it will be. And the WSL might, might get there first, or it could be the NWSL because they have the backing. Um, leagues like the A League in Australia. Uh, fr- uh, France's league, um, La Liga F, they need more more investment because, like, you look at La Liga F, it's the same team that win it every year, and when you've got all the talent that Barcelona have and they're all hogging it, nothing's going to change. I mean, you look at uh, Real Madrid; they've got the likes of Linda Casado, and in their ranks for their future. And then you look, you look at Atletico, I think it's Atletico Madrid. You've also got the likes of uh, oh, Ramirez from Colombia there as well. I mean, the, the talent is there, but it's a case of these big ball tournaments are the, the recognition for them and the way they play. Um, through the tournament, you saw me become that Colombia fan because I just loved the way they played. You know, looking at Daniela Montoya is looking at a move to the WSL from it. And there's, there's, so much movement going around from this tournament and it's it's what you want to see I mean we could have another three Matildas joining the WSL league um, I was reading today and we've already got 10 
so the fact that they've the alien well the australians have got to learn their trade elsewhere um is just unbelievable they should be doing homegrown talent but again these players wouldn't be who they are if they didn't come play english football so it's that we've we've got nothing to prove we just want to be treated equally and there's just a uh, archaic attitude there that needs to be gotten rid of but there's nothing we can do because fifa is corrupt from the bottom to the top it is absolutely rotten um and I just hope one day we find someone in charge that's got the same attitude as Vivian Miedemar because she will be absolutely brilliant in one of those positions. Her forward thinking, the way she speaks, the way she writes is is what we all want. But again, we have to prove a point to the men and it's it's not on. It's not acceptable. I couldn't agree with you more, Lottie. Um, he's, a, he's a strange chap in Fantino. We, we heard his press conferences in Qatar with his, you know, I'm a migrant worker, I'm a Qatarian. And the sad thing is I thought he was going to be a good leader of FIFA after the whole Seb Blatter debacle and what this, what an awful man he was and the nonsense with the Russian bids and the Qatari bids and he'd come from the for and I thought, he's a new person coming in, maybe he can clean up FIFA. He's actually worse. And that's the sad thing, he's actually an even worse uh, leader and he's not afraid to show it. And this is just another ludicrous statement about the need to... Um, fight to push doors. You know, was it pushing doors open, wasn't it? It was this whole, no, these doors should be open. Um, as Robin Cowan uh, very cleverly mentioned in her commentary when he strolled out onto the pitch to give the, the, the players their medals and, and World Cup trophy. It's it's the equality of opportunity and it's just, it's mad that we, you have this constant self-justification that exists around women's football that you know the lioness is oh they had to win the euros in order to to make this sport popular and you know we had to go do the world cup to continue the growth of the game it, it's it's at, it's infuriating and you shouldn't have to fight for the basic rights of, of um equality of opportunity and we see it on social media whenever there's something that goes wrong there's people laughing making jokes about equal pay um, you know, saying, oh, they, you know, why, you know, why should you have that? Well, it's not like, like it's, it's like the rights to basic things in football, like coaches, nutritionists, physicians, medical people. We talk about ACL injuries. Well, look at the medical, what, what the women and the men are entitled to from a you know, medical personnel perspective. It's things like that. It, it's just, it's maddening. And rather than the, the head of the entire FIFA stepping over saying, yes, we should, you know, be allowing uh, women to have maybe more pay, more more, uh, more money in a tournament, and they should have been entitled to better training facilities, to be entitled to better pitches. It's like, no, no, you you just keep shouting louder, and and it, and we might listen to you. Um, and it, yeah, it's it's mad beyond belief. And of course, FIFA tried to play the old um, um, mighty than thou card with the whole TV rights debacle before the World Cup, which nearly meant that we couldn't watch it at all. Um, no, it, it, it's sad. And if it, if I was to have someone in charge, I'd have them Dean Kessler. I'd, I'd grab her from UEFA and I'd, I'd put her into the, the heart of FIFA and say, because she seems to be the only person. Well, she's one of the highest ranking, I'd say, women in women's football. And I think she would be the ideal person to take over. But as you say, it's, it's a corrupt, insular, um, you know, men's club running the top of FIFA and you know they're not gonna they're not gonna bring a woman in to higher power to tap to offer a different opinion. And that is what FIFA is and it's it's a shame really. Um a missed opportunity by FIFA but at the same time not unsurprising. And Adam has corrected me as well just uh, off lot offline as well just to let people know I completely made a mess oh, yes. Adam yes, Hed- Hegerberg. I yes, do apologize <laughs> she is Norwegian, not Danish, as I previously reported. I do apologise in advance to all our Danish and Norwegians. Um, but now we'll go through the the worst of the worst, if I'm honest. Um, Jorge Wilder and the FA president. Um, I have no idea how I'm going to say this, so I'm going to have a huge attempt at it it was probably completely wrong uh ruby Ellis, um so essentially um builder of builder was seen posting with the f at the fa cup the um the tr- the world cup trophy and Matt, you're soon... wishing my life away here the fa cup's not till next may 
um, I, we'll cover things like that later, further down the line. But um, yeah, so Fielder was posted with a World Cup, the trophy of the World Cup, and the message just read Vilda in. Uh, staff were celebrated by themselves, uh, not with the players. At, there was for those that don't know, there was a separate shot of the staff on one end of the on, end of the pitch. The players were on the other end of the pitch celebrating with the uh, the fans. Um, Vilda was lifted up. I don't know whether or not that was done by the players. Um, Pomona has mentioned in a post match interview that Vilda. I had to sort of. Uh, I can't remember the exact quote that was used, so I've had to sort of paraphrase that. But she's, she, he's turned around and now said that she thinks he's a good coach. Um, in air quotes for those that are listening on audio. Uh, Ruby Ellis, who was caught uh, basically touching his genital, gen, uh, genta, uh, genitals. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I do apologise, <laughs> ladies and the, gentlemen. Right, he was touching his own crotch area. <laughs> His his genital area. Um, I do apologise because I've made Lossy laugh and this is meant to be a serious matter. Um, but uh, basically, Rubio's could touch his genital area on camera. Uh, then he's caught kissing Jennifer Hermoso um, when she's going to pass the trophy. Um, on TV, Hermoso then exclaims again, post-match interview she said it was a weird moment um Natalia Ante then reports later on today that uh Ruby Ellis in quote marks again begged um the homoso family uh so that homoso could appear in an apology video uh Fielder then approached homoso's family three times to also to appeal for her to be in that video again uh the the uh, then the this is all a bit strange. I don't I don't know much about politics in then as it's coming about at the moment. Uh, the acting president of Spain, uh, Pedro Sanchez, uh, said uh, on the gesture, "What whatever uh, we saw was an unacceptable gest- gesture. Apologies um, have not been enough. They are not suitable." suitable at all and that Mr Rubiales has to keep, keep taking steps to ensure things like that don't happen again. The uh, RFEF or as we'll call them the Spanish FA, um, there's a huge list from She Scores Bangers, did a brilliant interview during our build up to the World Cup with our Adam and uh, basically they pointed out that they had not addressed the entire situation. They publicly pushed a dis- different nar- narrative on this, uh, posting media platforms of pictures of both Fielder and Ruby Ellis, both as front and centre of ill. They've also now faked an apology of Homoso saying, again, in quote marks, um, it was a natural de- gesture. Um, just on this, I'm seeing Lottie's whoa, 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 face. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you serious? You're so we we are normalising sexual assault. There was a German there was a German football um, person as well. I think he said something else. He said it would seem to be absolutely okay. Um, and it's just it's insanity. It's absolutely oh, insane. Do you know what? I hold my opinion for the minute. I didn't even know yeah. that. Sorry. So I've sort of had a half an eye on this for quite a while. Um, if you watch the Spain preview, me and Inati spoke about the fifteen players on strike. And what's fascinating, I've got a lot of interest in in this because it's just the, the, the World Cup was about women playing football brilliantly, entertaining us and an amazing Spanish team winning the World Cup. And it's about women. And now the story is all about men. And it's all about men behaving in an unacceptable, disgusting fashion in front of the entire world. And it's taken the story away from who we should be talking about is the likes of Paul Matty and the likes of Hermoso. Um, playing amazing football and beating England but no it's about these awful disgusting pig dog men 
who think this is an acceptable behaviour. Now, the story begins, obviously, with 15 players that went on strike because they weren't happy with the FA, they weren't happy with what they were dealt with, what they, the treatment was, they weren't happy with the resources they had. And, of course, rather than listen to the players, like the French FA did when their players went on strike and removed their coach and made changes, um, Georgia Vilda basically villainised those who went on strike and the Spanish FA doubled down on their loyalty on Vilda and nothing really changed. Um, you come to the World Cup, some of the players opt to come back into the team and sort of sort of change their mind. I have my opinions on them. However, I'm happy to put them to one side based on what's happened now. Because up until the World Cup, it is pure, it just purely been, and this is going to sound heartless, but it was purely based on the accounts of the players. And some there were stories in journalists and the, the athletic, but it's purely based on the accounts of what the players are saying is wrong with the FA. And then you've got the FA saying this is all nonsense and it's all absolutely fine. And it's just... You've only got the words of one party against another and you have to base your opinion on that. What the winning the World Cup for Spain has done is it has basically put a lens on their FAs, put a lens on their whole footballing world. And the, there is evidence, visual, that we can all see that the Spanish FA is rotten. It can't be denied. It can't be brushed under the car. Um, uh, statements and 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 uh, false reporting and trying to get forgiveness videos from players who I you know I'm up to with her mostly there doesn't she doesn't she shouldn't have to do anything like that because it's purely on these people who have just been exposed to the world of what horrible people they are and will it inspire change well the the present get rid of the head of the Spanish FA um but according to the news reports coming through um but it's it's basically justified those who've gone on strike, and there's no way they could be be portrayed as villains or people or disruptors. They were absolutely right to go on strike, and I don't know what come of it. I'd like to think change will happen, but like with FIFA, I very much doubt it will. And we should add in terms of the sexual harassment, because um, let's call it what it is. Um, Georgia Fielder was filmed groping um, one of the players on the bench in the chest area. I believe it was after one of the goals. There is a footage of him doing just that. Not even apologising, not even saying, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to that. You just did that and then carried on, you know, coaching on the sidelines. It's absolutely disgraceful. And to have happen on the world stage, on the big celebration of women's football, for people to think that's acceptable, it's a sign of a person who knows that he's untouchable. It's like when a, when a child is naughty at home and, and knows you get away with it, he'll just be naughtier and naughtier and more, more rebellious and, and do more terrible things because there is no... There's no retribution. There's nothing to stop. There's no resistance. There's no punishment for doing what they're doing. It's it's unbelievable, and um, I'm glad it's now in the open in a sense that we can actually focus on it, talk about it, just as we are now, and have you know, proper evidence. And these people are now being questioned and being brought to task. Hopefully, something can be done about it. No, absolutely, with Adam on this one. I mean, like these two men's men have just again as i said earlier they under, un, un, underestimated the women's community for women's football um but they're the ones who hold all the damn power and they're untouchable at this point but it's not just women fo women's football it happens in we know this uh we can look at in the men's football look at pijamal that is the prime example nothing is being done about the quality of these referees um but what we should be looking at is protecting the players, not protecting the perpetrators. It, it's, it says all you need to know about how, how rotten everything is from, for the, from those who are in power. They think they're untouchable. They think they're going to get rid um, not going to be touched. And I hate to say it, but I don't think they will. Now you've, had, you've now got this evil man that is the politest way i can put it without dropping a c-bomb because that's what i think he is um in charge of this this amazing spanish team yeah you've won the world cup but you've you've overshadowed it with your behavior and it's it's kind of ruined it for me although i was on the bitter side of the world that world cup final i spanish, spanish football is always going to be amazing but with him at the wheel it's not something I, I can support anymore. Um, it's... How do I put this? 
How do you get rid of rid of someone like that? You can't. And I honestly don't know the answer. Um, because he keeps being protected. There is someone further up that food chain than the Spanish FA that is protecting him and he is getting away with it and it's just unacceptable. One of the things I do want to add is that player who in a press conference said that they were happy with the Spanish FA and that for me is very sort of heartbreaking that they've almost been these players because they're both who, who are the really talented players who have gone on strike the players that have been selected have almost sort of been elevated and sort of, and I think in some way sort of see themselves. It, there's a lot of emotional manipulation I feel that's gone on here that makes them feel like, you know, they're somehow special and the better and that's fine to be great because they are the ones that have been picked. So um, are you, and Adam, are you referring it's so to... disheartening that. Sorry, Adam, are you referring to Ivana Sands and our comments in um, it was the, the, it was uh, part... the Liga Extra? I think it was it was a clip. I think it was Carmona because he might have been the captain. And and in the press comments, she was saying like, "Oh, the Spanish FA are great. They've given us the winning platform for this." And it just felt just yeah. Just felt Ivana, so bad. Ivana, Ivana Sand said something similar. Uh, last few months, he's treated us very well. Just uh, the gesture is a mistake, and he has already apologised. This does not have to tarnish our World Cup and being world champions. But my genuine question to you two is: Has it tarnished it? For me, it's a solid yes. Because this is meant to be a celebration of top flight. It's a bitter after Yeah, it's, it's up until the final whistle, it was a superb celebration of the women's game. And, and advertised, but this is, the, this is the creme de la creme, this is the best of the world. And I think we truly saw that in the tournament, some amazing football, amazing moments, amazing stories, amazing narratives. But it's just... A bitter aftertaste at the end that is just taking the attention away from it, away from the goals and the memories and the heartbreak and the joy to, as I said at the beginning, it's all now back about men and about men in power in women's football, which begs the bigger question is, why aren't there women in power in the Spanish FA when it comes to women's football? Why is it men? Why is it men controlling women in football? It's, and again, we, we talked about equality earlier, you know, equality of opportunity and it's not it's not their women's football and it, they've got men in the FA with a man in charge of these women there's no representation there it's and you know it I felt bad when we lost the World Cup because I didn't I feel that a win for Spain gives these men in power self-justification that, that what they're doing is right and acceptable because Spain have won the World Cup they're the ones managing Spain therefore we're doing things right and everything's okay and it's not but they will treat it in that manner and they won't change because they'll think, well, we won the World Cup, so what we're doing is absolutely right. And it feels like, in a sense, I, I mentioned that earlier full time, that, that almost the, the forces of evil and bad have won the World Cup. But what it has also done is exposed them, exposed them for who they truly are. They can't hide behind press, press release statements and, and denial and villainizing players who disagree with their methods because we're all, we can all see what they've done. We are the ones judging you, not the players, not is what we ourselves. We've seen what you do. You, we've seen what you do in public. We've seen how you treat the players. We've seen how you lie and see and try and cover up and justify it. We are the ones judging you, not the players, not the people under your thumb who you manipulate. It's us around the world. And now the world is condemning them. And now the Spanish president is condemning them. And will the weight of that will make any change? If it doesn't, I think that says a lot about the Spanish FA and I think it says a lot about the women's football there and I think that's very sad. I think another thing that really irritated me was that the royal family did nothing. The Spanish royal family just stood there and did nothing. In the, they were in the crowd, weren't they? Uh, no, when they were uh, on full stage. Time, they were there to award the, the trophy yep. in the end, weren't they? I, I turned off at this point. Yeah. I, 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 didn't I switched over. I did Yeah. I didn't watch the presentation. I could tell you, I, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, unfortunately, I, I had no choice at that stage. So, yeah. I mean, I would have praised the royal family for not actually attending the um, the match, considering that's more than our royal family bothered to do. Absolutely, but then again, and our prime minister. And our prime minister. I have very little time for our royals now. After that, um, for the president of our own FA um, not to turn up is absolutely disgusting. And the message he posted was very, it felt very tokenized. 
uh, with Princess Charlotte standing there. Um, I used to appreciate the fact he used to turn up for the men's games, but if you can't turn up for all all football, your there's no point because he would he did go, I think I believe he did end up going to the uh, final for the under twenty one Euros. And I don't really care about the Royal Protocol. I don't care if Charles is there in a few weeks. The point is, someone from RFA should have been there representing us. And it shouldn't he, have been him. He was there for the US final last year. so He, he was, but before. it was in this country, but he wasn't there for I the know. World Cup final. I know. This is our first World Cup final, and it's absolutely mm. massive. Yeah. I would say, Rishi though... Rishi Shunek, where was he? Yeah. Well, Instead, we got a really Shunek. shitty message on, on Twitter. Oh, it's so shitty. Oh, we could go into the no, whole to, video messages want, and everything because some of them were just terrible. But sorry, I Adam, go on. I want to give you that, that message that he put out is even funnier because he's got it completely wrong. And I think that's the perfect sort of um, sort of response, like like karma. What do you say? You left nothing on the pitch, um, which I don't think is the correct um, terminology. No, it's like, it's, it should it's have like been everything on the pitch. Yeah. It's like when somebody who doesn't know football tries to have a football conversation with somebody but doesn't understand the terminology involved, um, which, and yeah, he got rightly done there, despite trying to have a PR photo of him with a pint in a pub watching the game. Um, video messages and, and so forth, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's what we're used to now, isn't it? Well, I think that is all for our discussion today. Um, thank you for joining us all on the fallout and Vic Acres Wonderland. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can find us at Lottie. Uh, my last message for this pod is protect our players, never the perpetrators. Um, and I think that, that is a very strong message that needs to be sent out right now. Um, but you can find us at VAW Pod on Twitter, or you can come find me at Lottie underscore AWC on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me at Adam Salterfall, um, where I'll be posting more um, stuff about the women's game. And mine is at Matt LR28. Thank you for joining us on the Fallout. I hope you have a good day, good afternoon, good night, whatever you're doing. Enjoy yourselves and enjoy the rest of summer, if it is summer, if, when, you join the, when you have joined us. Um, but that's all from us, and hopefully this will be the end of the fallout. But do keep an eye on our social changes, because there might be more on the way. But before we go, there is going to be one more episode dropping later this week, and that will be the transfer zone. Yes, it's back. Uh, everyone's doing a bit of a celebratory dance and cheer and fist pumping at the moment so um, yes do apologise but there was the Women's World Cup so that's why the transfer zone has had to be put on hold we'll try and keep you up to date on everything going on at the moment but thank you for sticking with us uh, it's been a vacation land. enjoy the rest of your day night, evening and goodbye <laughs>